Hey everyone, how you doing? Okay, another shooter, and this one, a bit of an oddity, a bit of a rarity. Killing Machine, from a company called Atlantis Software. Now Atlantis Software were primarily a budget label for the 8-bit machines, so to see this was quite surprising. Um, I, I really want to like this game more than what I do, to be honest. Just check out that artwork, I mean, this is a budget game that could barely, a uh, budget company rather, that could barely make ends meet. So it looks like it's almost pencil drawn. After the box shows some screenshots. Now, Killing Machine then is a vertical scrolling shooter. Uh, there's only three levels. Uh, it will come out in Commodore 64 originally in 1990, and this came out on the Amiga in 1992. So it's just three levels, so you can't expect too much. They're not particularly long, but they are quite tough. Actually, they're very tough. It's coming to me a bit. Um, yeah, so you've got your typical attack waves, although. They are in random order, so they're never the same each time you play the game. Uh, graphically, it's not too bad. Nothing amazing. Not bad, for, like I say, for a budget company. Uh, I quite, quite like the music, actually. It's not too bad. Uh, some nice meaty sound effects, you know, explosions when you blow ships up. Uh, and each level has a, a big boss, and uh, they are pretty unremarkable, to be honest. There's a great brain, which you're trying to reach at the level into level 3. And there's a picture of him there actually, you can just see that. Uh, so yeah, that is that is Clean Machine, that is almost it really. Uh, there are things in the game which are a little bit annoying, I and mean, the collision detection is a bit off. Uh, there are these things, I think you might actually activate them somehow, you might end up shooting something by mistake. And what they are, they're like, um, they home in on you sort of thing. They follow you around the screen in a circular motion, so it's very hard to avoid them. They can't be destroyed. They do actually eventually blow up, but one touch from them and it's, uh, it's a loss of life. So uh, I've already done the gameplay for this, and I I did alright. I got to the end of level two out of three levels or stages. Uh, but I'll show you. I thought I'd show you the third level as well. So I put the cheat on for the third level. Only the third level, just so you can see the great brain at the end. Uh, yeah. So budget game. The manual itself. Came on just a piece of paper, literally. So that was it. So you want to like the game more because you feel sorry for the company almost, you know, and they're really trying to make ends meet, and this is what they come up with. But it does have a few faults. I mean, it's never going to be uh, like a Squiv or Banshee or one of them games. Uh, but for a couple of pounds, it's not too bad. So uh, see what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. Ready player one. Waste no time in coming straight at you. So, quite nice playability so far. Graphics look okay. That being spectacular. That Mobra I just shot gives me a shield. Much needed in this game. These things fly near the bottom of the screen, so it's all to get them. Right. It's pretty good music. 
You've got to shield yourself, you can take so many hits. See that thing there? It's a pain in the ass, that's what it is. It's, um, it's like a homing missile of sorts, although it's not a missile. And uh, it just follows you around the screen. Very, uh, very frustrating enemy. creatures in the game that actually leave behind icons for you to pick up. That over there for the shield of course. That's a crab, it gives you speed. Speed up. There's no smart bombs or nothing like that. Shield. That caterpillar gives you the firepower. Now this only lasts just like the shield. It only lasts for uh, about 15 seconds or something. Beacons straight at you. No hope of avoiding it. Big craft you can't destroy. You can destroy if you've got enough firepower, but you could be very quick on the fire button as well. Back working out. I'll just stand there and fire, sit there and fire, so to speak. I'll, uh, I'll take him out. Obviously, his tongue will destroy you. So there's another caterpillar to give you a power up. I will die on this. Most exciting boss. Sector one completed, bonus 5,000. It might give me enough for uh, an extra life almost. I'll try and show you level two. Different craft this time, which are uh, hard to destroy. Here we come up to the second boss. Oh, this one's different. Oh, seems to die straight away there. Yeah? As you see, he's got pinchers. You just gotta avoid the fire when he opens his pinchers. You find the collision detection is a bit poor in this bit, but. Oh, 
one now. Get the caterpillar. Full collision detection again. No one near anything. There's another final level here. Hey, I suppose to actually complete this level without a cheat, I'll never know. Because yes, I am playing this with a cheat. <laughs> Are you in that one? hasn't got it has it quite but not bad for a budget game I suppose you can find it for a quid or two and all it does then cycles around to begin again do you really want to play it again no I don't either okay then guys uh, thanks for watching something new there see you again soon